What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be aquascaping our 40 gallon deep blue rimless tank, which we just attached or moved and then reattached it to our 300 gallon. Uh, this tank used to be our frag tank, which then is now replaced by a low boy, which gives me plenty of room. You guys will see an update, that, update on that here in the future. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and use this 30 pounds of Reef Saver Dry Rock that I picked up from both Resupply and we're going to aquascape our new tank today. Now, I did post a picture of the rock sitting in this tank on Instagram. You guys actually thought I was serious about that aquascape. Uh, you should know me by now. I, I'm way too particular about how things look to be able to just throw three, uh, three pieces of rock in there and call it a day. I did promise you guys we're gonna do something different. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna take these three rocks, put them on the floor, and I'm gonna smash them into a whole bunch of pieces with a hammer. And then we're gonna attempt to make something that doesn't look like dog shit in this tank so I can grow out Acropora. Now my overall thought process to aquascaping this is to make sure that it's spread out as much as I can, not a ton of it sitting on the bottom glass or at least where detritus can uh, build up and have issues cleaning the tank. I want it to be spread out so when I grow colonies, it's not really a display that I'm you know, striving to make perfect like my 300, but I am testing a different type of aquascaping and I'm also testing different growth in uh, corals and shading and lighting and all sorts of stuff. So it is gonna be a fun build. So. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to start breaking this rock up here in just a second, but I want to answer a question that I got on the previous video talking about this, and that is what and how and what do you do to add uh, rock to an established tank already? So you guys know that 300 has been up, I don't know, but almost two years, it'll be two years here soon. Uh, tank is great. I have 150 pounds of Pukani. I'm gonna walk over here and probably put the filter on, do some video overlay so it's not so blue, but uh, I have about 150 pounds of Pukani, which I uh, cured for three months before putting it into this tank. You guys know that I'm a big fan of curing rock, regardless of live rock or dry rock or dead rock or whatever rock, whatever terminology you wanna use, when it comes to setting up a brand new system I always cure it. Now, for this particular tank, it was curing for three months. I put it in here, never had an issue with algae, uh, ever. No hair algae, no problems ever like that in the history of this tank, and I've done some crazy stuff you guys have seen over the last uh, couple years. So, uh, when it comes to adding a rock to this tank, now, let's just go ahead and imagine that this is an eight-foot tank, and I'm just adding two more feet to it magically, and I wanna put in another pillar. Now, if I was doing that, if I was just adding Reef Saver Rock to this tank underneath this light with the fish and all that stuff going in there, I would 100% cure that rock for at least uh, three to four weeks, maybe a little bit longer, to allow that, that rock to have its bacteria film um, be established before adding it to this tank because they do run pretty high nutrients and the last thing I wanna do is have any algae. Now, the reason for that is the rock itself even though it's Reef Saver Rock, it's not necessarily that dirty. Now, if I was gonna get Pukani, of course I'd do the same thing. I would cure it to the nutrient levels came down, just like the original rock, and then I would add it to the main display. Now, when it comes to my current setup, where I have a tank that is still attached to the system, but has no light on it, has uh, no, I would say, access to anything that's gonna cause the new, or algae growth, you know, any kind of shade, you know, light spread from other tanks or anything like that, there's nothing that's gonna cause algae growth. So I feel pretty confident about just putting a dry reef saver rock, and I have to say this, adding just a reef saver, which is relatively clean. Now, if I just had access to Pukani and I was gonna put Pukani in this tank, I would have to cure that rock. And the reason why I say that is because Pukani is a really dirty rock that must be cured before adding it to your tank, regardless of what situation you might be in. So with this reef saver, I've had it, been, have it sitting in these barrels for a couple days, changed the water a couple times, it's been cloudy, Nothing, nothing major, and I don't see anything dead on the rock. It's relatively clean. So, uh, again, I feel confident of just aquascaping this tank dry and then letting it fill up, you know, with the system's water volume and then letting it run without light for a couple weeks. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's going to just run as normal as part of the system, just being another 40 gallons of water on the tank. And it's, but it's going to have absolutely no light for no less than two weeks. At that point, I'll probably either have the H, uh, HD primes back over here or I'll have the new Kessels on it and we'll uh, we'll go from there and start our whole uh, our, you know, putting corals in there and seeing how they grow and trying new things with that but yes you can add rock to an established tank but if you're adding it underneath the current light and it's gonna be exposed to all that stuff I would definitely 
uh, cure that rock ahead of time. But if you're putting it in a separate tank that's just attached, it doesn't have any light, doesn't have any access to that, that, uh, you know, what's going to feed the algae growth before the beneficial bacteria has a chance to uh, add that slime coat and, and penetrate the rock, then I would definitely not uh, add the rock. So I would just wait. Okay, so hopefully that answers the question and it clarified a few things. So uh, with all of that said, it's been another five minutes, let's go ahead and start smashing up some damn rock. All right, so here are the three pieces of rock I got. Again, it's 30 pounds. Seems like it might not be enough, but we won't really know until we get started. So don't forget your safety glasses. I'm um, just going to use a hammer, one of these cool bits, because I can't find my damn chisel anywhere. And I'm just going to break it. We're going to see what happens. I don't, I don't fucking know. Okay, so this is what I have to work with. I might go through and cut some more later, depends on how it fits in the tank. Uh, I might even use my saw to help flatten out some edges so it's kind of even. We'll see how it works out. Uh, but yeah, that was a pain in the ass, but it's uh, broken up and we'll see what we can make. So let's go ahead and get this stuff rinsed off and then we'll get it in the tank. All right, guys, now this is my first uh, attempt at aquascaping here in the shallow reef. You guys just saw that in the video. Wait, 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 wait. Are we missing the aquascaping video clip? And the answer to that question is yes. You want to know why? Because my phone's a piece of shit. That's why. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a top view and kind of go over my thought process behind this type of aquascape. Now, uh, the goal was to keep it as low as I possibly could. And you guys can see that it, it's pretty low. It gives plenty of room for the acros to grow. Um, especially up here, I can get some bigger colonies here. Um, and I wanted to spread it out as much as I could, but still allow plenty of water flow and movement. I'm trying to get around here so you guys can see. So all this stuff, we're gonna glue down here in a minute. I'm gonna leave it just like this because um, I, I'm not really sure exactly how everything's going to look, but I have a general idea of what I want for coral growth and placement. And this rock structure seems like it's going to do a pretty decent job. Now, again, there is gonna be plenty of flow behind the rock structure. Let me see if I can get here. Uh, we'll be able to put a power head down here, which will shoot all the detritus and everything over, which will collect in this front corner here, which will be easy to clean. And uh, I just see a lot of potential, a lot of room for acros to grow and not so much uh, shading because there's a lot of gaps here where acros can grow fill up the gaps and they can come together and I will place them and manipulate manipulate my lights in a way that it will help those acros to kind of grow to a certain direction just like I do on the uh, 300 so we're going to come in here now and glue all this stuff together I'm just going to go ahead and use straight up super glue I'm not even going to bother with the epoxy and then we're going to give it uh, you know a few hours to dry and then we'll put some water I do have some uh, salt water mixing right now it probably won't be ready until tomorrow anyways. But yeah, so it's it's definitely nothing crazy. Uh, I am trying to, again, spread the rock, what little rock I had out as much as I possibly could. So you can even see even little stuff like this. Uh, I'm gonna glue all these together, but I could put an acro here, which will fill up this area. I can put one here, which will fill up this area. And you know, I can, I can do things differently. Put some stags up top, the ones that seem to take up a lot of space. You know, I have a better idea of how some of these acros are growing in the 300 so I can manipulate that here in this little tank. But yeah, it's just little stuff like this, which gives a lot of room for growth. And that's what my goal is for such a small tank. And hopefully we'll have acros coming out of the water of this, just like the 300, which I don't think is going to be a problem and should be relatively uh, quickly. So uh, that's about it for right now. I'm going to go ahead and put the phone down uh, on the charger real quick. And then we're going to come back and glue all this stuff together. All right.
What's up guys, welcome back to part two or day two of our aquascaping uh, video. Now I went ahead and let this rock sit overnight so the glue could completely set. Um, even though we did use this instant set from Bulk Grape Supply, we could have technically put water in it yesterday, but I decided to see how strong the uh, rock structures would officially be, giving them 24 hours to kind of set up. Now, to give you guys an idea, you saw all the pieces that went into this little right uh, rock structure, and you can see that I mean, you can lift it up, move it around. It's really strong, so I'm, I'm confident in the fact that uh, the rock structures will stay where they are. It's in the fact I can't even move this uh, left rock structure at all. It's completely glued to the bottom glass. I think I got some on it when I was putting in like the little pieces in the corners. So it's, it's glued to the bottom glass, so I don't have to worry about that moving around or falling off or anything like that. Now, what's next? Well, technically I can go ahead and put in my uh, freshly mixed salt water and we can attach it to the 300, but first, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with RODI water just to get rid of all these extra particles of sand and you know just to clean out the rock from the instant set because I don't want to take any chances of it all getting into the 300 and pissing off my skimmer and causing it to overflow which can happen if you use a lot of the instant set at one time. So there's definitely going to be uh, leftover, I guess maybe it didn't all dry, whatever. It's going to be on the rock. So I'm just going to fill this up with RODI water just to a little bit above the uh, rock structure, turn on the MP10, let it run for about an hour, completely drain it out, and then fill it up with our freshly mixed salt water and attach it to the 300. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put some music on. You guys can watch that whole process and I'll hit you up before the end of the video. Hey guys, well it's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it up to this point. And here's a quick look at the tank three days after being attached to the 300 gallon. No cloudiness, no detritus issues, no leaking, no nothing. And here is the flow that's coming off of that extra DCS 12,000. It's up about halfway and that's pretty good. And it's also, if you guys remember, it's feeding this other frag tank that we have attached to the system as well. So it's pretty good. I have room to add more flow if I need to and the plumbing is handling the flow from both of these tanks without any issues. So um, overall, pretty happy with the uh, outcome of it. Uh, granted, this is a different type of aquascape than I've ever done before, and you can see that it's pretty tedious when it comes to gluing everything together, but I just wanted to make sure that it was going to stay in place when it came to actually putting coral and putting 
more expensive colonies in here than we have in the 300. So I want to make sure that the rock structure is going to hold up so stuff doesn't fall on each other or break prematurely, anything like that. So yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think about the aquascape. Granted, it's pretty bare right now. Nothing going on, no light. Tank is just sitting there being part of the water column. And it's going to be like that for the next two to three weeks before we add the lighting. Now, in this video series, I'm going to keep it short. So we have this video, which is the aquascaping. The next is going to be having the lighting over there, show you guys the par meter or par ranges and the schedule, all that good stuff with whatever light I decide to put on it. And then our third one is going to be adding coral to this tank and adding a fish and just kind of going from there. And I'll do updates periodically when I do updates for the 300. So, yep, it's a new tank. It's good. I'm glad to have it. And I'm pretty excited to basically have another display to put all the coral in that I can't fit in the 300. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, let me know. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.